Hi, it's Monday, October 20th. We're getting into the latter innings of the 2025 hurricane season now, but this is typically the time of year when we have to watch the Caribbean. And right on cue, we do have a system to monitor this week. This is Invest 98L, tracking westward into the Eastern Caribbean and will move into the Central Caribbean over the next few days. This brought heavy showers and thunderstorms to the Lesser Antilles yesterday. This is essentially a tropical wave axis. There's no closed circulation here with a field of deep convection centered along and east of the wave axis. If we take a zoomed in view here to kind of look at the cloud motions, you'll see easterlies right here at the surface. You'll see southerlies coming out of the Venezuelan coastline. And this is kind of on both sides of the surface trough axis, which is likely somewhere in here at the surface. But if you look to the east of this trough axis, you'll also see a region of rotation to your eye, very slight, but this is where the mid-level wave axis is, or the mid-level vorticity maximum. So there's a little bit of tilting going on here where we have the surface wave axis offset to the west of the mid-level turning due to some westerly shear that has been impacting 98L over the last couple of days and will continue to do so over the coming days. You can see this in the large view again if we look at the low level flow so all of the trade wind clouds are coming straight out of the east through the caribbean this is very typical flow for this time of year and really all times of year the trade winds are out of the east in this part of the world but if you look at the milky white cirrus clouds in the scene you'll see these streaming off from the opposite direction towards the east instead of out of the east indicating that wind direction is changing from height easterly at the bottom westerly at the top this westerly shear is about 20 knots or so in magnitude and is likely the strongest inhibitor of the storm at this point we are not getting a closed circulation to form in part because the system is tilted with height allow or preventing it from organizing in a significant way short term now as the system begins moving into the central caribbean there is an expectation that the trade winds will slacken off a little bit, making it easier for Earth's relative westerly winds to develop on the south side, closing a circulation off. So if we look at the European ensemble mean low-level flow at 850 millibars for Tuesday afternoon, you'll see the wave axis right here. You can see it's embedded in this generally easterly trade wind flow. As it moves westward, there is an expectation that this through flow through the Caribbean will slacken somewhat and you'll start to see more westerlies develop and a closed circulation begin forming in the model. And most models at this point have come into agreement that a closed circulation and a bona fide tropical storm will likely form in the Central Caribbean during the middle part of this week. It could be a slow and gradual process given the current disorganized state of the system and models disagree on the speed with which organization will occur. The typical goalposts we can look at for this are the GFS and the ECMWF where the GFS is typically pretty aggressive with the timeline for development and the ECMWF is typically a little more conservative. If we look at the GFS here, it really anchors down on the mid-level turning where we see the thunderstorm activity today. Again, that would be this part of the wave axis right here where you see the visual rotation. The GFS really burrows down on this and develops a surface circulation quickly beneath the mid-level center. And on this model, it tightens up very quickly and we have a tight circulation even by tomorrow on Tuesday that quickly uh, develops into a hurricane strength system as it turns toward Hispaniola. This is relatively fast and with the moderate shear expected to persist, it may be a little too aggressive on the timing here, which is a typical GFS bias. If we look at the European model, on the other hand, it's much slower with the development, continues to show a tilted wave axis. There's the surface trough and there's the mid-level trough right there. So you can see the offset that persists for some time. So even on Tuesday morning, we have the surface center still to the east of the mid-level or to the west of the mid-level center. And we see much more gradual intensification of a tropical storm strength vortex, but not at the pace that the GFS shows. And we still have a tilted system with most of the deep moisture in green here weighted to the eastern side of the circulation as it continues to contend with the westerly shear. And we do expect that shear to persist given the upper level wind flow uh, that this time of year is always going to be present near the greater Antilles and certainly north of the Caribbean. The subtropical jet's not going anywhere at this time of year. So with the storm in this part of the Caribbean, we told you the surface trade winds remain out of the east as they always are. And then we have southwesterly flow aloft in this European ensemble mean forecast for Thursday afternoon, showing that contrast in the wind flow there easterly at the surface, southwesterly aloft. That's a moderate shear that will persist throughout really most of the storm's lifetime, if not all of it. And that's likely to 
cause some limitation on the storm, hopefully enough to keep it from developing into a strong hurricane, but we don't yet know for sure. There are multiple models, not just GFS, that do create a hurricane out of this, and it will probably depend on how long it sticks around in the Caribbean, which is also a subject of uncertainty, which we're going to turn to now. Regarding the track of this system, it's going to enter an area of weak steering currents later in the week. So you've seen how model forecasts bring it westward following the trade winds into the Caribbean because the system is currently shallow. It's feeling mostly the low level steering flow. And so it's following those easterly trade winds toward the central Caribbean. By the time it gets there, though, we're expecting a developing tropical storm. It's becoming more vertically deep because it's stronger and it's going to feel the influence of steering currents, not just at the surface, but also aloft. And as we look at this 500 millibar chart from the European model here, we'll see two mid-level ridges, one over Mexico and the Gulf extending out over the Western Caribbean centered here. And then we have another ridge over the Lesser Antilles to the east of the storm. We have a broad long wave trough off of the Eastern United States coastline. And there's this break between the two ridges. The storm 98L, which would likely be a tropical storm by this point on Friday morning, it's marooned between the two ridges to its west and east. And this is a classic situation where the steering currents are chaotic simply because the two steering flows from the two ridges are opposing each other. The storm is stuck between. Whether it continues westward or turns toward the north depends on which ridge ends up having more influence. This trough is going to pull out toward the east, allowing the western ridge kind of nose in overhead. You'll see this turning motion in the flow over the Bahamas and Florida. And if the storm remains down in the Caribbean, as the European model shows, this ridge ends up having a bigger influence as it builds over to the north and really traps this storm for quite a length of time, possibly even pushing it farther west before it's able to turn north much later in the future. However, in GFS land, the storm develops more quickly, as we already discussed, and because of that, it starts to feel the mid and upper level steering flow more strongly. And remember, the, the winds aloft are out of the west or southwest, so the storm more readily turns towards the northeast before this ridge has a chance to build in and trap the system. So this storm turns in the GFS model more quickly towards the northeast and eventually escapes out to sea here after a time period of moving slowly. So there's some disagreement here on the track, and this has been true for a few days now. We really haven't seen confidence increase markedly in the future here. If we look at the European Ensemble, you'll see just what we're dealing with. This is the cluster of red numbers representing the 50 different possible futures in the European Ensemble, showing the possible locations of 98L as we move forward in time. This is on Monday evening. As we move forward, you see the cloud moves westward, and so far, you know, decent agreement on where this is going to be, but it quickly spreads out from here, where the more northerly grouping starts to continue north and cross Hispaniola, so we have a grouping that starts moving out of the Caribbean, a group that is struggling to leave, it's a little slower, and then yet another grouping that never really makes the northward turn simply continues westward, and you see just how spread out we are by Friday night at this point. We have a huge ellipse of areas where the storm could be by the time we're getting into the weekend and the European Ensemble not providing a lot of clarity on what's most likely here. And if we look at the tracks from multiple deterministic and ensemble systems that the National Hurricane Center likes to use, you'll see the same thing. Some models, especially GFS based, turning towards the north over Hispaniola, moving out of the Caribbean. And then there's some that linger, make it as far west as Jamaica and are moving very slowly. This is five, six, seven days out and the storm hasn't made it very far and is still marooned in the Caribbean and still others that continue westward without really turning towards the north. This is going to remain a difficult forecast until we have a bona fide storm that actually develops. Again, keep in mind, we are dealing with a tropical wave axis. We do not yet have a well-defined location of a storm circulation until we have that it's going to be difficult to forecast the track properly. The track will be dependent on exactly where the storm forms and how strong it gets. A stronger storm more likely to turn toward the north, a weaker storm more likely to remain in the Caribbean for some days as it's marooned in weaker steering currents as a weaker storm. One thing to be aware of though as this system is coming west, regardless of the level of development and the exact track northward or not, it's going to be a fairly 
sprawling system. You can see the area of thunderstorms associated with it, and it may continue to enlarge in a bit. And if we look at the precipitation forecast from the European Ensemble as an example, you'll see the precipitation continue to accumulate over the next several days. And really, regardless of the exact track, there could be a wide area of the Greater Antilles and Jamaica that could experience heavy rains and the potential for flooding concerns. And if the storm is lingering for multiple days in this region, uh, that concern could grow considerably if this field of rain is spreading over these mountainous islands, causing flash flood and mudslide concerns. So everyone should be prepared for that. Please stay safe this week, regardless of whether 98L develops and becomes a legitimate wind and surf threat for these areas. There will be rain over this entire region. And we're going to keep a close eye on this system as it moves toward the west and hopefully get some clarity on where it goes within a couple of days once a bonafide tropical storm forms. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.